Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In our previous tutorials, we have explored servlets in considerable detail. And uh, in this tutorial onwards, we're going to have a look at uh, JSPs. In order to understand JSPs, we need to have a good understanding of servlets. So it's recommended that you go and uh, check out all those tutorials first and then you can start with this one. So what are JSPs? Before we look at what JSPs are, I like to point out one potential problem of using servlets. Uh, to be honest, using servlets, you can develop any web application. We have all the required technology to do that. So uh, you can capture any user request in a URL and then you know assign a particular servlet to handle it. And then any HTML code that you need can be written in the servlet by using the print writer. We've already seen all these things. But there is one potential problem here. Let's take an example website. I have my uh, website open here where I post all these uh, tutorials and, and it's under the name Java Brains. What does it take to render this kind of a website, this kind of a page in HTML? So we can look at that by doing a right click and uh, go to view page source. It might be different depending on the browser, but the functionality is the same. Now look at the source of the simple web page. This page has just one simple tutorial. We have a set of links here and then a comment box. Now this has a whole lot of code apart from the HTML code itself. And then the HTML code itself is it's pretty huge. Look at this, it uh, goes on and on and on. Now imagine writing all this code inside a servlet. You would have to have so many print methods and then each one of these lines will have to be passed and there could be chances where the you know the the string would break say for example I need to pass this double quote how would I do that I would have to escape all these special characters so while it can be done it is uh, it is a pain to do it and uh, more than the logic which is required to run the sublet the uh, you know the code which is required to print all these HTML text is going to be huge, and uh, it'll be it'll be hell to maintain some servlet like that. So one way to solve this problem is to use JSPs. So this problem of putting all these HTML text into Java print statements was acknowledged, and that was how the concept of JSPs came up. What happens in JSPs is it instead of using servlet and java code and uh, i have html text inside that it works the other way around you have uh, html and you have java code inside of html so for example say i have this as a html i have redesigned it using pure html code no print ln and all the stuff required now i can just print this title using java code all these others will be HTML. I can just print this date using Java code. So what happens is uh, only the dynamic portions of this web page will be rendered in Java code and uh, the static contents of this web page will be in HTML. So we won't have to print each and every HTML line using println statements. So in summary, that's what a JSP does and that's how it's different from servlets. Now let's do a, let's create a quick JSP and see how it looks. I will expand the simple sublet project here. I need the JSP inside the web content. Just like I have a HTML here, I can have JSP files also inside the web content. So I'll right click here, new. You should see a JSP file option here. If you do not see that, again, same as earlier, you should see that in the web folder. So click on this JSP file. Again, I want this in the web content. I will call this as test.jsp. Since we're just testing what a JSP looks like, I'll leave this as a standard default finish. Okay, now we have our JSP here. Now, how is it different from our HTML? We had a very similar code in our HTML as well. See, this is our index.html, which we generated using the Eclipse uh, wizard. 
So as you can see, there's a lot, not a lot of uh, difference between the two. There's only a little bit of uh, code over here at the top. Apart from that, it's it's all the same. Now let's run this JSP. I'll right click on it, run as, run on server. It will deploy and start Tomcat. And I have my window here. And uh, A, I see the title here because that's the title which is there in the JSP. But there's not, not a lot happening here. So let me write some text. Okay, so I've written a simple uh, H3 tag with some text just to test that this is working. I'll save this and run this JSP. we can see this text is displayed. So this is, so far, it's no way different from um, a simple HTML. Now, the way it differs is you can write Java code here, as I've told you before. So let's write a quick Java code. Now, in order to write Java code, we need to somehow mark it as Java code so that it does not render it, because otherwise any text that you write here will be rendered as uh, HTML. So the marker for Java code is this set of tags. The first tag that we're going to talk about is this less than percent and percent greater than. So whatever code you write inside these two tags will be rendered as, I mean, will be executed as Java code. So I can write code here like int i equals 1, int j equals 2, int k, and then uh, I can also have k equals i plus j. Basic Java, nothing nothing special here. But the thing is that this can run inside this file. So this will be executed. I'll save this, refresh this. This is actually executing, but we're not printing anything. So we will not see any difference. So in order to see this uh, being executed, what we can do is we can actually print the output of k here, for example, into the into the you know output HTML or the output JSP that's over here. So how do I do that? I can I can use out dot print ln value of case. Now if I refresh this, this output comes up. So here is our first advantage of using JSPs. Uh, we have a print output value over here. So we can, whenever you want to print some value, you don't have to get the print writer and all that stuff that you would do in a servlet. You can just use a out object. And this out object is of type JSP writer. And uh, this take has a println method. And whatever you send over here is going to get rendered over here. All this is fine, but we can do this in a servlet as well. Of course, we need to initialize the print writer. Um, okay, here we have it, our earlier servlet. We just have to get a response to get writer, but then after that we are doing the same thing. We're just doing a writer.println. It's the same thing over here. Now what's special about JSPs then? Okay, one additional feature of JSP is that uh, since this is such a common thing, out.println is such a common thing, since we are writing uh, HTML text, we would use that a lot. So if the output is not a dynamically calculated value, it can be outside these tags, and it will automatically get rendered. We don't have to do an out.println every time. But say the value is actually dynamically calculated, like in this example, then there is a shortcut to do this out.println. So let me show you that shortcut. I'll remove this. This time we will use a different way to print the value of k. So the the initial text over here, um, the value of k, is this is static text. We don't have to put this inside a script block. So let's just type this here. Okay. Plain HTML, this will 
this will just get uh, rendered as it is okay now how do I print the value of k here there is a shortcut we use the same script tag and inside the script tag I just use equals and the variable name so let's so save this and refresh there you go the value of k is displayed so this is a shortcut you can use for every uh, for any value it doesn't have to be a variable even a static value here say I want to print 3 or uh, let me give something else 34 I want to print directly then I just pass it there it's it's gonna come here this can even be an expression instead of using all these I can just say equals 1 plus 2 save and the value of the expression will be calculated and rendered so this is a this is a very good uh, way to print values which are dynamically calculated so you have a script block where you do all these calculations and uh, you just want to print the output the part where the uh, the output is dynamic you can enclose it inside these tags and then print, print that and then you can you know go ahead with printing static content over here and then it automatically gets appended and rendered so see this how it works as far as the user is concerned they just do not see the difference it's as if there is this one continuous stream of text that's coming in HTML okay now before we conclude this brief introduction to JSPs I'll show you one more tag that's handy uh, there is a declaration tag which is again the same script tag but with an exclamation mark after that now what this declaration tag does is so you want to declare a method then you can put this inside this declaration tag and uh, this method will be available to all these script tags you can have n number of script tags like this where you execute code now this declaration method will be available to all these script tags so uh, let's say I want to define um, a method here saying uh, public add I'll just have an add uh, method which takes two integers I'll save this now this method will be available to all these script blocks now I can I can actually open another script block here and say k equals add of a big number and another big number and then let me copy this. Don't have to type this again. Now let me add a new line here. I don't want that to come in the same line. So I'll add a break. Another advantage: you don't have to do out dot printl and break. Just put the break outside the script tag. It will get rendered. Now this time I will pass the value of k itself. Save it and refresh. As you can see, this time it's printed that br and then the value of k this time is the addition of those two numbers that I've put over here what's happening is even this script block is referring to the other declaration script block here I can have as many functions as many uh, methods as I want and uh, it's directly calling this passing these values and uh, I'm printing out the value using the, the script output tag